Assault is the intentional application of force against another person without their consent. Assault can range from a pinch on the arm to a punch in the face. But did you know that you can be charged with assault even if you didn't touch the person? A threatening gesture or a swing and a miss is enough to be charged. If you're watching this video, it is likely that either you or a loved one has been charged with assault. The most important thing you can do right now is make sure that you hire the right lawyer to defend you. Throughout my career, I've successfully represented countless individuals charged with assault. Call me today for a free, no obligation consultation. But until you make that call, here is what you need to know. There are a number of defenses to assault and they are each based on the specific facts of the case. Of course, the best defense is if you didn't do it. People make false allegations all the time for a variety of reasons. We often see false allegations arising from a breakup in the relationship or during nasty child custody cases. One of the most important first steps if you think you're going to be charged or have been charged with assault is to take pictures of any injuries you have as a result of the incident. If you're covered in bruises, but the complainant alleges that they didn't touch you, the charges shouldn't get very far. It's also important to take pictures of damage caused by the person making the allegations. If they're alleging they did nothing and are simply a victim, but much of your property was destroyed or damaged by them, the prosecutor may think twice about proceeding with the charges. The first defense to assault we're going to talk about is consent. In order to be convicted of assault, the prosecutor must prove that the force you applied was without the consent of the other person. Think about two boxers in a ring or two hockey players squaring off at center ice. Both people have consented to the fight, therefore there's no offense. We understand consent in the context of boxing or hockey, but what about in the real world? A perfect example would be if you got into a street fight with another person. You both get into an argument inside the bar, agreed to go outside, and then went toe to toe. Just because you won the fight and police were called doesn't mean the fight wasn't consensual. In this scenario, you would have a defense of consent. If, however, bodily harm occurred as a result of the fight, you no longer have a defense of consent because a person cannot consent to bodily harm. The next defense we're going to talk about is self-defense. In order to rely on the self-defense provisions found in the criminal code, you must satisfy the judge of the following criteria. That you believed on reasonable grounds the other person was going to attack you or a third party. The force you used was to stop the attack and the force you used was reasonable in the circumstances. In considering whether the force you used was reasonable, a judge will look at things like the nature of the threat, whether the attack was imminent, your role in the incident, whether any party used or threatened to use a weapon, the size, age, and gender of the parties involved, and the nature, history, and duration of the relationship between the parties. If a person is about to hit you and you push them away, it is highly unlikely that you're going to be convicted. However, if a person pushes you, and then you punch him in the head 10 times, it's going to be an uphill battle to claim self-defense. While these are two extreme examples, there are countless scenarios that would afford you a claim of self-defense. The next defense to an assault charge is reflex action. Reflex actions are involuntary physical reactions. In order to be convicted of assault, you must commit the physical act and have done so intentionally. Any involuntary act, such as a reflex action, cannot rise to the level of a criminal offense because intent is a necessary ingredient of assault. An example of this is if somebody sneaks up behind you and grabs you by the arm. Out of reflex, you spin and hit that other person with your elbow. This was not intentional and therefore not an offense. The last offense we're going to talk about is corrective force. This is essentially the spanking defense. The criminal code allows teachers and parents the ability to use corrective force on a child in their care, as long as it's reasonable. This defense is most commonly used when a parent spanks their child when they're misbehaving. While you're allowed to use your hand, the use of a weapon is strictly prohibited. Now, Back in the day, parents used to use belts or a wooden spoon. This is no longer allowed and will not afford you a defense to assault. If you or someone you know has been charged with assault or any other criminal offense, Call me today to arrange a free, no-obligation consultation. Mm -hmm.